The Premier League is the most cosmopolitan football league in the world. Roughly a quarter of all Premiership footballers today are black. But of course, that hasn't always been the case. Most football fans are aware of the game's modern black trailblazers. Viv Anderson was the first black player to pick up an England cap back in 1978. John Barnes lit up the Maracanã with a wonderful solo goal against Brazil. And Paul Lintz made history in 1993 when he became England's first ever black captain. 100 years before Ince, Barnes and Anderson, however, there were a few unknown men who truly led the way for black and ethnic minority professional footballers. Phil Vasili is a football historian and author. This early group of pioneering black footballers did face lots of obstacles and difficulties just playing their chosen sports. However, uh, they opened the doors for future players because um, they were good at what they did. The first of these men was Arthur Wharton. While he was playing for the top team, Preston North End in the 1880s, he was also the 100-yard sprint champion of Britain. He was at the top of his chosen sport. He opened the doors for, for, for black footballers in the future to be themselves in many ways. The Victorian era saw an explosion in the popularity of football, and as the game grew, so did the number of prominent black footballers. I think there's quite a few pioneers that have been forgotten. People like, say, Andrew Watson, first black international, Eddie Paris, Jack Leslie, who played for Plymouth Argyle, was selected uh, to play for England, and that selection was later rescinded when they realised he was black. Arguably the most prominent and groundbreaking of all, however, was Walter Tull. Walter Tull was the son of uh, a Barbadian father and an English mother and was born in Folkestone in Kent in 1888. He played for Spurs between 1909 and 11. He was one of the best footballers of his generation. Uh, his career suffered because of racism. Then, at the outbreak of war in 1914, footballer turned soldier as Walter volunteered for the Middlesex Infantry Regiment and was sent to the horrors of the Western Front. Before he even reached France, in 1915, he'd been promoted three times. And after the Battle of the Somme, he was commissioned as an officer in May 1917. Unfortunately, like so many men of his generation, Second Lieutenant Walter Tull died on the battlefields of France. His body was never recovered, even though uh, his men tried to save his body and bring it back to their lines for burial. There were two letters written by officers in his regiment saying that Walter had been recommended for a military cross and that he, he deserved it and he'd earned it. Now there is a campaign to lobby the MOD to posthumously award Tull his military cross. It would be a great symbolic uh, victory for all of the injustices that, that not only Walter faced but black soldiers faced and black footballers faced to give Walter his military cross but it, because it recognised that he deserved it and he didn't get it because of racism.